Hi folks, Philip Andrews here from the Elements team and in this session we're going to be looking at a couple of great new colour controls introduced in Premiere Elements 10 that will really increase the level of adjustment that you have available to you when it comes to the colour in your photos. Let's have a look at this uh, little clip that we have here and you can see how it's three guys just playing with a ball and a multicoloured parachute trying to get the ball in the center of the parachute to pop up and down. Not an easy task, but one of the great things about this particular clip is the amount of color that we have in the image. And to be able to control the color a little bit more with this sort of clip would be a great advantage. So let's look at the two new color controls that we have in Premiere Elements 10. I'll just go over to the Edit Task Pane and then just down to the Color Correction option in the drop-down menu in the Video Effects section. And here are the two new controls, Auto Tone and Vibrance and Three-Way Color Corrector. So first of all, let's look at Auto Tone and Vibrance. I'm just going to select that and drag it down to my scene on my scene line. You could, of course, also just select it and then click Apply to get the same result. Immediately, you'll see an increase in what appears to be saturation of the image. Let's go and see what's going on. I'm just going to click on Edit Effects now and then just twirl down the control that we have for auto tone and vibrance. And you notice that we have a basic slider control here, which as I drag it down to the minus, you'll see that some of the strength of the color is actually being removed from the image. As I push it up to the right hand side, you'll see how that strength returns. But interestingly, as I push it up, you'll notice that skin tones remain pretty consistent. This is great because when we're just using a standard saturation control, all of the colors are actually affected in the same proportion. We make changes to the strength of the colors in the same proportion. Whereas using a vibrance slider, we are able to target only those hues in the image that are desaturated and give them the boost that they need. We also have the ability to make sure that skin tones aren't as affected as other areas of the image. This means that you have a lot more control in being able to pump up the strength of the colors in your image without going too far and having skin tones going garish. If we spin down the auto tone control, you'll also see that we have some options here as well. At the moment, we're just working on auto, but if I take that off, we then have the ability to play with the range of tones in our image. So we can adjust the brightness, contrast, exposure, and black and white points all separately, giving us far greater control over both our tones and our colors in our image. Cool, well that's looking great. Let me just toggle that effect off now and twirl those controls back underneath the heading. And let's go and look at the other color control that we have. And it's called the three-way color corrector. Again, I'm just gonna click and drag that down to my scene in the scene line section of my workspace. And then I'm going to click on edit effects. You notice we have a new entry now, three-way color corrector. And this is particularly useful for adjusting the white balance in our image. So most people will know that the white balance in an image is kind of like the color of the light that permeates throughout the whole of the photo. So we have a couple of ways of doing that. But first of all, let me just click on this preview tonal range option in the top right. Notice that the tones in the image are now broken up into three separate tones. We've got black, mid gray, and white. And it's done in this way because this is the way that the actual tool works. Notice that we have mid tones or grays, highlights or whites, and shadows or blacks. So by allowing us to preview the tonal ranges in our image, you'll be able to predict what changes you make in each of these parts of the feature will affect those particular parts of the image. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to the mid-tones to start off with, the first thing we can do is actually use this particular gray balance dropper tool to go and select something that's about a mid-gray or should be a mid-gray in the image. I just selected the white sneaker there, which is in shadow and so is around about a mid-gray. We can then drag down and use the two-way color wheel that you see here. First of all, to drag around the outside, you'll notice that I can change how the colors are distributed within the image. These types of changes can quickly lead to colors that don't look realistic, but it does give us a great deal of control over creating very unusual color mixes and getting some very interesting results. 
I'm just going to click Reset Midtones to take me back to where I started. And then let's look at the second part of this control, where we can click and drag the center point out from the middle of the color wheel, and this enables us to adjust the tint of the middle values in our image. So notice as I'm working around the color wheel that the middle values are being tinted a different color. So in essence, it's providing us with custom tuning of the gray balance that we've already set. As we look at the rest of the entry, you see that we have a slider control at the bottom here that allows us to adjust the saturation of the changes that we're making to the middle values. So how strong is the color in the middle values? So we can do the same thing that we've just done for our mid values to highlights. You can see here we can set the white balance and we can adjust the color for our highlights as well. And we can also do the same thing for the shadows as well. So what does this mean? It means that we're able to independently adjust the color of the highlight, middle and shadow values of our image. So this is a much more sophisticated way for setting white balance or for creating artistic looking distributions of color in our image than we've had before.